Hi, my name is Kenny Garcia. I am the uh, president of Reforma, the National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to, to Latinos and the Spanish speaking. Hello, I'm Cecilia McGowan, president of the Association for Library Service to Children, also known as ALSC. Hi, I'm Todd Krieger, president of YALSA, the Young Adult Library Services Association. You'll be hearing more from me later on. Welcome everyone to the 2020 Pura Valpre Award Celebración. It is a joy to gather each year to celebrate the work of our Latino and Latina authors and uh, illustrators, the recipients of this joint award. The Apura Valpre Award, uh, established in 1996, is presented to a a Latino Latina writer and uh, illustrator whose work best portrays, uh, affirms, and celebrates the Latino cultural e experience in an outstanding work of literature for children and youth. It is co-sponsored by the Association for the Library Service to Children, or ALSC, and the uh, National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to Latinos and, and the, and the Spanish-speaking, Reforma. You will also be hearing from two of the founders of the award later. The award is named after, uh, after Pura Valpre, the first Latina librarian at the New York Public Library. As a uh, children's librarian, storyteller, and, and author, she enriched the lives of children in, in the U.S. through her uh, pioneering work of preserving and disseminating Puerto Rican folklore. I want to um, congratulate all of this year's uh, winners, and I want to thank the selection committee for all of their hard work. Now, here is uh, Cecilia P. McGowan, president of AUSC. Thank you, Kenny. I'm honored to be a part of this singularly special occasion and thrilled that the Association for Library Service to Children known as ALSC, is a partner in this award, which honors the significant contributions of Latino and Latina authors and illustrators for children and youth. This award is for all children and youth, and I'm proud of the collaboration between ALSC and Reforma. I'm happy to pass this along to the founders of the Pura Belpre. Welcome everyone. My name is Sandra Rios Balderrama and I'm a co-founder of the Pura Belpre Award. I bring you greetings from the Central Valley of California where the words of Dolores Huerta and so many human rights activists from this part of the country keep us strong. Those words are, si sí se puede, you can do it, it can be done. And authors and illustrators, you've done it. You've also helped to make a dream come true. 35 years ago, Oralia Garza Cortez and I dreamt of a way to create more Latinx authors, illustrators, artists, and writers to create children's books and to create books that reflect us as the complex beings that we are with fantasy, with humor, with growing up experiences, and so much more. And here we are in 2020, this year's winners, the winning books, you all are exceptional and so many honors because so much beauty. Authors and illustrators, I want you to know, we promote and use and encourage your books in schools and in libraries and at home and sadly, yes, on the buses to detention centers. And in reality, yes, while waiting in line six feet apart. You bring us so much joy, healing, relief. You bring us fun and laughter. In the spirit of the beautiful Pura Belpre and all her legacy, in the spirit of you as dreamed us for all your courage and creativity. Felicidades and welcome to the Pura Belpre Award Familia. You are so deserving. Congratulations. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the 2020 Pura del Pre Award Celebración. My name is Maria Peterson and I am the chair of the 2020 committee. 
Today we are here to celebrate authors and illustrators that produced distinguished works that best portrayed, affirmed, and celebrated the Latinx experience. As a committee, we read throughout the year, and during the midwinter meeting in Philadelphia, after several days of discussion, selected these outstanding titles. For narrative, the committee selected one winner and four honor books. And for illustration, the committee selected one winner and three honor books. The titles on our list take you across universes and bays. They take you back into history to the time of Lincoln and the Great War. They take you for a ride on a motorcycle as well as through the market. They share how difficult it is to grow up Latinx in our country. And they tell us the story of Pura Bel Pre in a way that helps us understand who she was and why this award was named for her. And now, the presentation of the awards. Yay! Yay! Congratulations! Yay! Letty Out Loud, Angela Cervantes, Scholastic Press, an imprint of Scholastic Inc. Let the Out Loud exposes readers to a variety of immigrant experiences when Leti Munoz, an English language learner, spends the summer volunteering at Animal Shelter. Although initially hesitant to speak out, Leti learns to use a voice to stand up for others. I am pleased to present Angela Cervantes. Hi everyone, I'm Angela Cervantes, author of the 2020 Put a Bell Pray on our book, Letty Out Loud. The first time I learned about Puro Bill Prey was many years ago when my mom was a fifth grade teacher in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we were talking about my dream to be a children's author and she told me about a book called Esperanza Rising by Pam Munoz Ryan. She said her fifth graders were nuts about this book, she loved this book, and she suggested I read it so I could learn how to write an award-winning book. I asked my mom, well, what award did it win? And she said, well, so many. But the one that mattered most to her was the Pura Bel Pre because it was named after a Latina librarian. Since then, I've learned so much about Pura Bel Pre and her amazing life, and I've read many of the books that have received this prestigious award, and never in my wildest dreams would I think one day I would be a recipient of this award. So thank you so much. This honor means so much to me, not only because Letty Out Loud is a story that I wrote from my heart, but also because now I'm included on a long list of many talented authors whose books I admire, including this year's winners. Muchas felicidades and congratulations to all of you. For this honor award, I want to thank the American Library Association, the Association for Library Service for Children, Reforma, and especially the Pura Bel Pre Committee for believing in Letty Out Loud. Thank you so much. Letty Out Loud would never have happened without my scholastic and full circle literary family, including my wonderful editor Anna Bloom and Lisette Serrano and Emily Hedelson for cheering me on, and to my agent Adriana Dominguez for telling me 10 years ago that my writing showed promise. Thank you for guiding me then and thank you for guiding me now. I'm grateful to the wonderful school librarians and teachers I've met along the way. Many times when I'd visit the schools, the teachers and librarians would give me wonderful words of encouragement, tell me what my books mean to them and their students. And those words of encouragement, ooh, man, they really helped me through some of the roughest days and nights. So thank you for that. And I can't forget my family either. It's because of them and the many adventures we've shared that I will never run out of stories to tell. Finally, I must thank the many children whose experience learning English in this country inspired this story. I've witnessed firsthand their courage, their diligence, and grit, even when confronted with being misunderstood, underestimated, and often feeling left out. Now they have a book that represents one of their many stories. I hope that they can see themselves in this book, know that they're not invisible, that their stories matter, and that stories celebrating them can even win awards. Again, thank you so much for this honor. Muchas gracias. Bye. The Other Half of Happy by Rebecca Ball Carcel and published by Chronicle Books is a lyrical story of self-discovery. Our narrator Kihana enters seventh grade feeling in between and struggles to find her place in her friendships and family and what her half Guatemalan heritage means to her and her authentic self. Ball Carcel writes with the care and beauty of poetry, integrating wise aphorisms and the richness of Guatemalan culture. Please welcome Pura Bel Pre author honoree Rebecca Ball Carcel. 
This is my dad's guitar. His songs were the soundtrack of my childhood. Cielito Lindo, Guantanamera, La Bamba. My mother always joined him, harmonizing by adding in the alto line. In fact, the three of us sang. I was only seven years old when I found myself at the front of a church singing a Spanish Christmas song, performing in native clothing. As we drove home, I remember feeling a little down. The truth was, I didn't understand the words I was singing. I'd memorized the syllables and I loved the melody, but I didn't feel legit. When we visited my Guatemalan-born cousins, same thing, they immediately recognized me as more salt than cilantro. Like Kihana in the other half of Happy, I was a mixed kid and I couldn't switch languages like bike speeds. In the other half of Happy, Kihana manages to embrace both sides of her heritage and through the love of her abuela especially, finds validation, self-acceptance, even self-celebration. Without fluency in Spanish, she still finally belongs. My favorite comment on the other half of Happy came from a young person tweeting, I have never felt so seen in a book. Her tweet made me feel seen. I'm not alone. My kind of family is real. Apparently, validation and self-celebration can flow from reading a book. A book alone will do if abuelas are few. This is why the Pura Bel Pre Awards carry such importance. Whether it's kids juggling two or more cultures, or just searching for that path to self-celebration, Reforma, ALSC, and ALA are pointing them to books. So many novel readers this year are going to be meeting Sal and Gabi, Leti, and Kihana. I'm deeply honored that my book is among these and past winners. And I say my book, but a book takes a community. So thank you, family. Thank you, Agent Katie Grimm. Thank you, Editor Taylor Norman. Thank you, Chronicle, for producing a beautiful book and sending it into the world with such energy and love. And of course, thank you, Committee, for your reading and organizing and your commitment to this work. My heart is with you all, librarians, readers, teachers, book lovers of all kinds, as we celebrate the books being honored today and their power to connect hearts, ignite self-confidence, and make a better world. Que le vaya bien. Thank you. Planting Stories, the life of librarian and storyteller Pura Pepre, written by Anika Aldemoy Denise, illustrated by Paola Escobar, published by HarperCollins Children's Books. This inspiring picture book biography follows Pura Pepre from her native Puerto Rico to her new life in Nueva York. This book captures Pura's passion for storytelling children and libraries. Please welcome the 2020 Pura Pepre Award honoree Anika Aldemoy Denise. Thank you so much. I am incredibly grateful to the Pura Bel Pre Committee, Reforma ALSC, for this honor. I was so looking forward to being together in Chicago, celebrating, hugging, and thanking you for choosing Planting Stories as a 2020 Pura Bel Pre honor book. And even though we can't connect in person, we can and we must continue to connect to celebrate our stories. Our picture books, our novels, our poetry are essential right now. They're how we make sense of the human condition. They provide us a long lens on history so that we remember that we have before and will again come through difficult times. They give us words to hold on to when we lack them and the quiet spaces to retreat to when we need them. This is something that Bura Belpre knew in her bones, that stories are vital and that every child deserves to see their lives and experiences reflected in the pages of their books not just in stories of struggle, but of magic and triumph, invention and adventure, bravery and hope. Stories like Sal and Gabby's, Letty's and Quijana's and Daisy's and her papi's, full of humor and heart, 
like the stories Buddha planted, nurtured, and kept blooming for us all. So now I need to thank a few folks, and I'm gonna try not to cry. <laughs> First, thank you to Paula Escobar for her exquisite illustrations, to my marvelous editor Nancy and Telly, and to Chelsea Donaldson, Manny Blasco, Erica De Pasquale, Sam Benson, Patty Rosati, and everyone at HarperCollins. I also want to thank my agent, Emily Van Beek, for her endless support. A huge thank you as well to the archivist at El Centro, the Center for Puerto Rican Studies, without whom I could not have written this book, and we would not have the treasure of the Belpre archives. Thank you to my daughters, Sophia, Isabel, and Esme, and to my husband, Christopher, for supporting my writing journey with patience, encouragement, and love. To my Titi Rosie, who introduced me to the stories of Puro Belpre. To my papi in heaven, who is smiling so wide right now. And lastly, I want to thank all the librarians and educators who are supporting our Latinx communities, especially in this time where so many are suffering. You inspire me by walking the path Buddha lit with her storyteller's candle every day. Mil gracias a todos. Mwah. Soldier for Equality, Jose de la Luz Science and the Great War by Duncan Donatiu, Abrams Books for Young Readers. The story of Mexican-American activist and World War I soldier Jose de la Luz Science is told with exquisite detail in this picture book biography. His struggle against racism and injustice in early 20th century Texas is presented in a concise but thorough manner, complemented by extensive notes. We are honored today to have with us Don Cantonatiu. Hi everyone. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the Pura Belpe Committee uh, for this wonderful honor. I'm very thankful um, for it. I'm very uh, happy and pleased that my book received an honorable mention for writing uh, because this book in particular I had to revise, reimagine, start from scratch several times over. It was quite a long writing process, so it's very rewarding um, uh, to see some of my efforts pay off. Um, so thank you. I want to say uh, thank you to my editor and friend, Howard, Howard Reeves, uh, who believed in the project and who helped me, who guided me in finding that, that shape, that right shape for the book, who, who asked questions and, 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 made, and helped me make the book better. Um, and to the Abrams team, the, the, you know, the people that helped me design the book, produce the book, uh, it's always a, a, a joy to, to work with them. They've always so, been so supportive and they do such great work. Um, in this book, I was a little behind schedule and they were always very patient with me. So I really appreciate that. And to the marketing and salespeople um, that, you know, make sure to Jenny and everyone else that make sure that librarians, teachers, and everyone um, sees the book. I'm really um, happy and thankful to be working with you. I want to say thank you to my family. Uh, who always support me, who love me, you know, my wife, my children, who always encourage me. Uh, I was actually, I remember uh, working on the cover, some of the last details for the cover while we were supposed to be on vacation, uh, and they, they were always encouraging and supportive, so I'm very grateful for, for their love. Um, you know, this book, Soldier for Equality, is a story that takes place about 100 years ago, most of it, um, and it's about... Jose de la Luz signs his involvement uh, with the U.S. forces uh, as a soldier fighting in World War I. But it's also about his struggle and his fight for against prejudice, against discrimination, for equality uh, back home in the United States and Texas. And even though this is a historical book, I think it's a book that is very relevant uh, to our world today. You know, as I'm recording this, there's been protests uh, after the death of after the killing of George Floyd um, for the last days, um, over the last days, all across the United States. So that frustration that Luz felt a hundred years ago because of the discrimination that uh, Mexican-American people like him felt um, is very much alive. You know, prejudice, racism is still very much a part of our world. And, uh, and that frustration that, that he experienced is very much there still. And that fight um, for, for a better society, for, for a more equal America is definitely very much alive today. Uh, so I think the book is very relevant to, to, to young readers uh, nowadays. And so again, I just want to say thank you. 
I, uh, I'm very thankful, I'm very grateful. I wish we could be in person uh, celebrating together and hopefully sometime in the future we will be. Thanks again. Sal and Gabby break the universe. Carlos Hernandez. Rick Riordan presents an imprint of Disney Publishing Worldwide. With humor and heart, Sal and Gabby take us on a rollicking adventure that spans multiple universes and challenges our understanding of dimensions. Please welcome Pura Bel Pre author award winner, Carlos Hernandez. Friends, I had no idea the Pura Bel Pre selection committee was even considering Sal and Gabby break the universe for their award. When I received the call, I was cleaning shrimp for dinner at my friend Fran Wilde's house. And by the way, do you know Fran's award-winning work? Please go buy all her books. But as I slowly, unbelievingly received the news that I had won, I was holding my phone the whole time with both of my hands, slimy, shrimpy hands, to make sure I didn't drop it, while Fran and my wife Claire watched me with growing curiosity, wondering who it was on the other side of the phone call who was making me hop up and down. To all future Buddha Bell Prey winners, I have this advice. Take a moment and wash your hands and then go answer the phone. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, I want to give my thanks to all the members of Reforma, the ALSC, and the ALA who make this award possible year after year. This is the first major award I've won for my writing, and given the Buddha Bell Prey mission to honor the achievements of Latinx writers and illustrators, I couldn't be prouder to put this award at the top of my biography going forward. Change is hard, and progress is slow, but the Buddha Bell Prey Award is an example of how it gets done by building institutions devoted to the mission of reform. While I wish that we could all be celebrating together at the ALA annual meeting, I am so honored and delighted to be able to express my thanks to you virtually. The most important thing we can do for each other right now is keep each other safe. The second most important thing we can do right now is to bring joy and inspiration to each other. Nothing happens without inspiration. Hunger inspires our trips to the kitchen. The love for our families and friends inspires us to make sacrifices to better their lives. And art, that great possibility engine, inspires us to reimagine the feasible, the preferable, the ideal, and the just Inspiration is always step one to a better world. Inspiration is what I hoped most of all Sal and Gabby Break the Universe would offer to readers. Middle graders are smart, thoughtful, and ready to engage the larger world with all its beauty and all its tragedy. I went into writing Sal and Gabby with those assumptions, and let me tell you, after a year of school visits and readings where I've been talking to gymnasiums full of kids, I can tell you that those assumptions were on point. That's why I wrote a book that didn't focus exclusively on the difficulties of having a Latinx identity, nor only the difficulties of being a type 1 diabetic, nor only the pain of having a baby brother in the NICU, nor only the difficulties of being in possession of a power that could potentially break the entire universe. I tried to balance all those difficulties with hope and the good hearts that beat within the rib cages of good people and the ways in which we can recover from our mistakes. And even when we don't have all the answers, the courage to take action and try to make the universe a better place to live in. We need that kind of courage more than ever. But that's why we have art. Art that gets art. It's the good angel sitting on the shoulder of inspiration, sharing wisdom and lending strength, and most of all, fostering the desire to create. But I have to be careful with that metaphor. I would love to expunge from human rhetoric the trope of novelists toiling away in the middle of the night, galvanized by their self-made genius, the weak light of the candle on their desk no match from the brilliance emanating from their own glowing heads. My own experience and the experience I've heard from more or less every writer I've ever spoken to is basically the exact opposite. 
Claire read every word I wrote for Sal and Gabby, including the hundred thousand words I cut out before I put the manuscript on my editor's desk. Talk about love. My current writing group remains one of the most supportive groups of people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. So thank you, Claire, again, and Delia and Ellen and Joel and Liz Duffy for the many angles from which you helped me view and improve my work. My dear friends and beta readers, Chris Kreuter, Julia Rios, and Jessica Wick saved the manuscript from ignominious errors and terrible ideas through their careful reading. My agent, Dong Wong Song, wrote pages in response to a draft to Sal and Gabby that clarified and reinforced key points in the book that I then bolstered as I revised. Then, the book went to my editor at Disney Hyperion, Stephanie Lurie. To all the writers out there, wherever you are in your career, I have this blessing for you. May you someday work with an editor as brilliant, joyful, and supportive as Steph. Sal and Gabby was not an easy book to edit. I was making up words left and right in two languages and in a comic mode, which depends so much on brevity and timing and a shared context. I learned so very much about writing from Steph and I'm eternally grateful for the way in which she helped me both push my writing to new territory and remain true to my original vision. Steph Lurie improves everything she touches with her magic pen. And I am so grateful now to be able to say that she is not only my editor, but my friend. Thank you, Steph, for the chance to work with you. And speaking of chances, the main reason Sal and Gabby came into existence is because of Rick Riordan. You know the old saying, don't meet your heroes? Well, I am here to tell you now that you can feel free to meet Rick. He is just as wonderful in person as his narratorial voice would lead you to believe. But he's just not a great guy one-on-one. -on -one. He created the imprint Rick Riordan presents in conjunction with Disney Hyperion to give people from a wide variety of cultures and backgrounds a chance to tell their stories in their own voices. I certainly would never have had the platform to tell my zany Cuban-American multiverse story without the imprint. Thanks to him my book, and the books by an ever-growing number of people from multicultural backgrounds are getting printed, reviewed, and read. Thank you forever, Rick Riordan, for making the world a little more inclusive. And I have so many more people to thank. I should be going on for hours saying thank you to the many people who made Sal and Gabby Break the Universe possible. Please, hágame un favor, read the acknowledgments at the end of the book and see how many more people to whom this book owes a debt of gratitude. I've been led to understand that those acknowledgments are fairly long, but to my mind that's as it should be. Writing in just about every case isn't a solitary act. As the author of a novel, I'm much more akin to a movie director who collaborates extensively in the creation of a work of art than some suffering, genius-ridden poet scratching out midnight truths, tormented and alone. I think there are two main kinds of acceptance speeches. Those that try to use this chance to share a philosophy of art or a political concern, and those that try to find as many different ways of saying thank you as possible. I wrote this one firmly in the thank you camp, since I still can't believe my luck at being published by Disney Hyperion under the Rick Riordan Presents imprint, which helped me reach a larger audience than it could have reached otherwise, including the members of Reforma, the ALSC, and the ALA, who have bestowed on me this award, which I will treasure forever. And anyway, if you want to know my philosophy and politics, I've written a few books that you might want to check out. Thank you so much, readers. And thank you, librarians, for helping people read more.
Across the Bay by Carlos Aponte is published by Penguin Workshop, an imprint of Penguin Young Readers, a division of Penguin Random House. Through a distinctive line-drawn style and vibrant color palette, readers are taken on a journey with Carlitos as he travels to Old San Juan. Aponte offers a true sense of place in his illustrations that pop off the page with the sights and sounds of Puerto Rico. Please welcome Pura Bel Pre illustrator honoree, Carlos Aponte. Thank you, American Library Association, for awarding me one of the Pura Belpre medals for illustration. I'm deeply honored to be part of this group of beautiful image makers like Seque Peña and Raul Gonzalez, who brought life to My Papi Has a Motorcycle and Vamos, Let's Go to the Market. Congratulations to both of you. I can't wait to see your next project. Across the Bay is my story, a true story. But this tale of this kid looking for his father it's an excuse for a deeper one, rediscovering my roots, my love, my culture, family, and I appreciate what we have. Across the page, also across the Atlantic Ocean, the diaspora longing the warmth reconnection with the island. Last year, I traveled to Puerto Rico to present the book to a group of students who, just like my character Carlitos, made the trip from the town of Catania to Old San Juan. I was delighted to read on the book. I wish you could see their faces when they discovered the story was about a kid who lived in their hometown. They were thrilled, they were happy, and they were very, very proud. I told them if I was able to tell my story, they could do the same. I dedicate this award to those Puerto Rican kids. They might live in a small forgotten town, but like me, they have love, family, and big dreams. I am them, and they are me and that connection will always, always be there. Thanks to Penguin Workshop, my editor Max Pisan for shaping a very emotional story, and Francesco Edita for his fantastic support. Thank you very, very much. Y a todos ustedes un gran abrazo. Gracias nuevamente. My Papi Has a Motorcycle, illustrated by Sig Peña, written by Isabel Quintero, and published by Coquila, Penguin Random House. Daisy's father is a carpenter who comes from work in the evening to take Daisy on an electrifying motorcycle ride, which she gets to see the changes in her busy Latinx neighborhood. Please welcome the 2020 Pura Bel Pre Ilustrator honoree, Zeke Peña. Greetings, friends. My name is Zeke Peña. I hope this finds you and your family in good health and spirit. For this amazing honor, thank you, ALSC Reforma, as well as all the librarians and educators doing hard work in our communities to get books in the hands of readers. I'm thankful to the committee that generously gives their time to consider our books. To be honest, it's been a little difficult trying to get into the headspace to record this video. But today I'm reminded that this is a special time we're in. It's a blessing to witness the years of hard work from community organizers meeting the energy of youth activists in the streets against systemic racism, police murder and oppression. As people of color, this moment challenges our ability to remember the resilience of our ancestors who have been fighting for generations. As storytellers, we have a responsibility. We wield the power to rewrite, reclaim, and document, to help remember. We hope our stories will resonate through future generations, to be a stronghold for empowerment and self-determination. If we don't see ourselves in the books we read, how can we remember who our people have been and imagine what we can become? My Papi Has a Motorcycle is our small offering to the people of our communities that make our neighborhoods a home. We remember the people who build our houses and pick the food we eat. We acknowledge them and honor their work. Our hope is that young people find a little bit of themselves and their communities on the pages of our book. We also hope they have fun on the way zooming along with Daisy and Papi. This award is for my good friend Isabel Quintero, her Papi, her Mama, and her brother. Without their story, my illustrations are empty. Also, to my late father, who always made time for me after work, my mom, my partner, my family, and my community. To our agent, Peter Steinberg, who represented us on this project, and Namrata Chupathi, our editor, Joanna Cardenas, Jasmine Rubero, our art director, and the Coquila family at Penguin Young Readers, who gave us the support to tell our story and do our thing. 
Congratulations to all the award recipients, especially my friend Raul III, two people from El Paso, that, that's pretty amazing. <clears throat> I hope that we all continue to grow toward liberation, to defund the police, abolish ICE, liberate all detained migrants and prisoners. Black Lives Matter. Thank you. Vamos, let's go to the market by Raul III. Versify Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Little Lobo and his dog, Bernabe, make their rounds in a bustling border town market in this charming story that is sprinkled with Spanish and cultural references throughout. There is always more to see and do at El Mercado, so let's go, because you never know who you'll find there. We are honored to have with us today, Raul III. Hello, my friends. My name is uh, Raul III. I am super honored to be here with you today. Um, I want to thank the Pura Belpre Committee for honoring me with uh, the Pura Belpre honor. It looks awesome on this book, so thank you so much. Uh, so thank you to ALA and to Reforma. I have three minutes, so I'm going to try to rattle this off as quickly as I can. Uh, so I'm really honored to be sitting on this stage. Let's pretend this is a stage, right? Pretty honored to be sitting on this stage with uh, Rafael and, and Carlos Aponte and Zeke, and to the writers, Carlos Hernandez and Angela Cervantes, Rebecca, Anika, Duncan. Your work is so inspiring and so important, and it's awesome to just be here with you today. I also want to thank my team at uh, Versify and HMH. So Kwame, Man, thank you so much for putting together uh, Versify, and to and and, uh, and thanks for inviting me to to be on, on on the first list. It's been such an amazing adventure to to put these books together. I also want to thank Ariel X. Ariel, uh, you have been one of my biggest supporters from the get go. None of my career would be possible without you and the book doctors and for giving me that phone call and asking me to come up with ideas for uh, Kwame's new imprint. I'm so, I don't know how it happened, but I'm so glad that I was able to create uh, Vamos and let's go to the market. I want to thank my amazing editor, uh, Margaret uh, Ramo. Margaret, uh, you are such an inspiration and you give me a lot of confidence to uh, write and illustrate books, uh, your guidance. I couldn't do any of this without your amazing guidance and, and with your, your help. So thank you. I can't believe we're working on our fifth book together. Uh, I pinch myself continuously over, over that and the many more books we have coming out soon. Uh, I want to thank my amazing art director, uh, Natalie. Natalie. Uh, thank you so much for everything. You make these books look so amazing in every which way. Like, look at this. That little cocorocho there. That's so cool. Great. Uh, Trish, thank you for making sure that these books are printed so magnificently. Uh, and, of course, I'm going to thank uh, Elaine Bay. Elaine, uh, your coloring on these books is so amazing. Um, I'm so lucky to live with you and to have your inspiration around me constantly. Also, quick uh, shout out to my family in, uh, El, in Juarez and in El Paso. Specifically, thank you to my familia in Juarez working at the Mercado Cuauhtémoc and to the amazing photographs that my cousin Annette Torres uh, handed uh, to me so that I could be inspired to create this book. So, a todos, muchísimas gracias. Agradezco todo. Y un día, ojalá, Estaremos juntos sin estas máscaras. Goodbye. Peace. Dancing Hands. How Teresa Careño played the piano for President Lincoln. Rafael López. Athenaeum Books for Young Readers. An imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. Creating a sense of time and place through the use of colors in mixed media, Rafael López brings the story of Teresa Careño to life. Please welcome Pura Bel Pre Illustrator Award winner, Rafael Lopez.
here we are, confined to our homes and the security of social distancing, looking at what is and what is not important and essential in our lives and trying to make sense of it all. We look for things to help us deal with this isolation. In the silence, the book becomes a friend and the musical note a soothing companion for the long days confined to four walls. And so, we have time to think and reflect on what really matters by comparing real worries to manufactured ones, to value people like Teresa, the heroine of this story, who might speak different, look different, or think different. After facing real challenges, we can see more clearly. We are a nation, a world of immigrants, and can find common ground when we can share a story or play music together. Soothing notes, jungle notes, play by exuberant dancing hands, bringing stories from far away, a place different than the sameness of these four walls, a reminder that a remarkable diverse world is waiting for us, that the notes played by a young girl who just arrived from Venezuela can bring us comfort, healing, and joy, because her music is her voice and her story, and it brings dimension, making our country our home. I am grateful to the Purable Pre Committee, Reforma, ALA, and ALSC for giving the story of Teresa Carreño wings to find its way into the hands of more young readers. I want to thank Simon and & Schuster and my editor, Rika Simonson, for their trust and giving me the freedom to interpret Teresa's compelling story with pictures. To my agents, Stephanie Van Vorstel and Adriana Dominguez, for guidance and opening doors of opportunity. To my family, for the unequivocal love and support, even during days of doubt and introspection. Finally, to my friend, Margarita Engel, for crafting the story of an amazing young immigrant in search of a better life. She enriched the lives of those who she met along the way, including President Lincoln a president who worked to unite us all in time of struggle, pain, and division, listening to the voice of soothing notes, comforting notes, migrating from far, far away. Thank you. The Buddha Prayer Award was created as a children's literature award because of a gap that existed in the literature at the time that did not adequately reflect the strength and the beauty and the whole of the Latino population in America at the time. It was the era of multicultural literature and yet books by Latino authors and or illustrators were few and far between. We felt that such an award could serve as a guide, not just for teachers and librarians, but also for parents and for anyone who worked with Latino children, so that they could be more understanding of the cultures and families. They could better serve the children. We envision an award that demanded the highest level of integrity and authenticity, because children have a right to see themselves adequately and reflected in the literature, and they have a right to good books. As do all children have a right to see who we are, and who Latino children are, and have a better perspective. The Purabel Prayer Award continues to grow, and as we grow, we expand. We're very excited about that, and we're looking forward to more books, more illustrations, more authors, and more children reading about the Latino experience. 
because children in America deserve just that. Thanks for joining us today. A huge congratulations to all the winning authors and illustrators. I'm excited to announce that YALSA has accepted an invitation to join ALS and Reforma in participating in conferring the Pura Belpre Award. Starting with the current 2021 Pura Belpre Committee, an added category that will recognize titles for teens will be awarded. YALSA looks forward to celebrating the work of Latinx authors and illustrators with ALS and Reforma. What a lovely celebration, so magnificent. And I'm so excited and happy that Yasa will be joining us. And I want to give my thanks to Reforma for this fabulous award. And now I believe Kenny is going to take us out. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, Reforma is excited to continue and expand the partnerships with Yasa and Naosk. And we are looking forward to uh, next year's uh, celebration. Thank you.